How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane, and I'm here to give you another Yashihime Princess Half Demon episode review and recap. Today's episode is episode 45, Osama, or sorry, Osamu Kirin's Apparition Conquest. Before I begin any further, please do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell right next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of more videos just like this. As always, please make sure to share the video so us can see what a great time we're having. We are trying our best to get to 200. We're going to keep breaking through each and every last one of those goals. So, this episode is very interesting because I'm going to keep my prediction that this show, I think I said, if not last week, a couple weeks ago, that I thought the show was going to end episode 50, maybe 51. They could probably push 55 if they really want to do more fan service things. I think it might be 55, but it's really, it's looking towards the end. Like, we're definitely getting loose and tied. As a matter of fact, we even got a nice little goodbye in this one. A goodbye, and uh, we'll definitely see them again, right? So, there was no pre, you know, pre-play before the before the intro song, right? And we usually, they get a little bit of tidbits, like, oh, what happened last time? Here's a little bit of something what's happening right now. Boom, intro. We didn't get that. We just got a straight intro. <clears throat> Pardon me for the sniffles. My allergies are acting up pretty bad. Anyway. So, the girls are stuck. And Kagome's mom, who the show has gone to call Grammy now. They call her Grammy. I don't know what they're calling Kagome's grandpa. Like, I guess I'm just going to call him old, old, old man. Because now I'm going to call her Grandmama. Higurashi, but she comes up, she hugs uh, Setsuna and Moraha, and she's happy that they haven't left yet. She's like, you know what? Glad you guys aren't gone. Let's come on over and you know you, you get some food. We got some leftovers. Being a good, being a good mama, right? Good mama, good grandmama. Meanwhile, uh, and all the girls look genuinely happy. At first, I made a joke that only Moraha looked happy. No, all the girls look genuinely happy about seeing her and everything, right? One thing I forgot to say is Mr. Kieran is actually in the intro. I don't know when they added him in or if he had been there the whole time. I feel like they added him in probably a couple episodes ago and I didn't notice or maybe just this episode. But he's, he looks super evil, even though he has that same old smile that still is evil with all that purple. Anywho, um, Kieran is being a word that I won't say, but he, he's, being, he's being a big a-hole. This fool says that the Yashihime are responsible for bringing about the degenerate age. Look, man, I know at least one person that's a super fan, that's in a group I'm in, a super fan of Kiyomaru. I'm going to say it three times throughout this review. This will be the first time. This family has got to go. You blame them for bringing about the degenerate age with the demons when it was literally your goofy ass that went through the windmill when you were, when you were, you were not given permission to burn the windmill and then all the demons came out after that. They have permission from the god of time. From the being of time. Nothing happened when they went through. All hell broke loose when you did it. Just the 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 or the audacity of this guy and his family. And just, just all of them. I think at this point it seems like the only good one is Riku. So <sighs> there's demons all around. We even see Osamu, Mr. Kieran. Killing a bunch of demons, he's gathering power into that stupid blade, and he's sending it up to the Grim Comet. And I, I, I love the vindication I get for what is actually inside of this stupid thing. He's like, it's not enough energy, blah, she, blah, she, blah. Pardon me. And um, where am I at here? So whatever he's doing, he's making this thing inside grow. I'm gonna be straight up. It's a chrysalis. All right. Be sure you know. I'm gonna spoil this all around, all along the way, because I'm so happy that I got right what this thing was. And at first, I'm like, is he having the humans are perishing? Because that's what it looked like here. Maru was happy about, but apparently, no. Him and Osamu have been trying to destroy these demons, right? But um, he's talking about he doesn't want humanity to suffer, and everything's taking too long. He's wondering what Rion's doing. He goes, oh, he just has this big oh, as if he just knows what he's doing. Is he able to see through Riku's eyes, or is he just? Is this just a weird God mode thing? You'll see what I mean in a minute. So, Riku trips and falls. Uh, they got that 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 uh, fruit from the Kikyokun root. 
and Rion shows concern, but she's like, oh, you know, you know, he, he says, I prepared for this. Let's just keep going. And then we get Booyon. Booyo. Oh, the best, the best character in the show. Booyo, the cat who goes Booyon. Just amazing. He's, he is laying down sleeping with little May, uh, Sota and Moe's daughter, right? And, uh, still think Booyon is a, is a demon. Still think he is. Anyway, uh, the girls will explain the situation. Toa thinks things are going to get worse. Everyone's just kind of like, oh, it, it'll be okay. And, and, uh, grand great grandpappy is just like don't be so grim i'm thinking to myself you all didn't realize that you were moments near death because you couldn't see the giant comet in the sky you all were this close to dying okay so i hate calling her grammy but grammy higurashi is saying that man this family has really long lives now that i think about it super old cat great grandfather yeah wow how old is he? Is he in his 70s? Huh. Anyway. She says they all should take it easy for a bit. May, you know, I already said that. Uh, Moraha mentions she finally got to meet her parents. And now she's stuck on this side. And Anthony brings it up. Colt, uh, Sota says, you know what? Kagome, you know, her sister was stuck on this side for a while. She said she couldn't get back. And they were like, oh, well, how long did it take her to get back? He's like, three years. I'm guessing that's what happened in the final act. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I missed. I, I really, after the show is over, you know what, I'm going to go back and I just might review some of the places where I stopped at with Inuyasha. You know, you know, review a couple of clumps of the episodes. I think that's that's what I might just do. Even though the funny thing about this series is you don't really feel like you missed out on anything if you didn't watch the old stuff. You get told, which is a good way of doing things, mind you, because that means if you've seen it already, you love that it's been brought up. If you didn't see it, you don't feel like you missed out on too much. It's a good thing. One of the few good things about this show. Um, let's see here. So, Sota really wants to know what happened on the other side. And Toa, you know, she's in tears. She's like, you know, she met up with her parents. She promised she would come back alive after defeating all this stuff. And Sota basically says, you know what? You seem very heartfelt and really wanted to go back and save everybody let's all just go to sleep and tomorrow morning we'll go right for it and we'll you just ask the tree again he pats her on the head it's a really nice parent moment there and um here we go here we go here we go so may wakes up and she's sleepy saying she wants to sleep with sasuna and sasuna is like she's carrying booyong which i just realized this cat is as long as this little girl is almost and so soon as going off to make sure she doesn't trip while going to go sleep, because they're obviously at Grandmammy's, Grandmama's, Higurashi's house. And um, my Grandmama Higurashi's gonna make a bath for Moraha, who says in straight up English, "Thank you." She's excited for this. Um, Great grandfather goes to sleep. Toa spends a little bit more time with her adopted parents and she's about to leave out and she stops for a minute and very weirdly says, you know, mama, uh, mama away, papa, so to good night, right? It's like, hey, it, feels, it feels a little bit grim there, kind of odd there. Why'd you, why'd you stop right there, Toa? Hmm? You guys know why she stopped there. Now we'll get to that in a minute. So meanwhile, Rion and Riku make it to Kiramaru's ship, which I might add, Earlier, it looked like Hiromaru's ship was just floating in air. No, he was just standing up on the mast, right? And they're going to sneak on in. Riku's going to fight the demons on the outside so Rion can go in. She goes in. Hiromaru asleep. And she got this apple. She's like, ooh, okay. It looked like he had been drinking a little bit, too. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go take care of this. And, of course, Osamu, Mr. Kieran, grabs him by the arm and goes, you should let him sleep a little bit longer. You know, he's been fighting all, you know, hours and hours. He's exhausted. And he explains who he is, that he is the right hand. He's like, you remember me? I got cut off when your father faced the great dog demon. And he's doing the same stuff that she remembers. The warmth of being touched on the cheek by the right hand. Um, he hugs her. He even cries. He's like, you know, I heard what happened to you. And I'm sorry that your body is in this state. And she's getting the feels. Like, she's getting the flashback of flying with her father, smiling when she hugs him. Because he's like, oh, the smell you smell like my dad you're my, you're my dad and i'm like mm, i don't like where this is going i don't like what's going in one bit mm. Mm. so he's saying 
I have the same dream you do. I want to protect all the trees and the birds and the flowers and just create this world. He's like, but, but that apple thing you got there, that, that kikone root fruit, you can make your dream come true. And she's going to follow him. So they back out, they go upstairs, and he flies them off. And Riku's like, who the hell is this guy? So he's going to he's gonna fight the demons and go follow him, right? Where am I at here? Because this, this, this pace matters. So the next morning, the girls are going to try to get through this tree with the pinwheel in it. Uh, T Toa is asking for the tree to please open up. And then on the flip side, they all just start asking Akuru to help them, right? And then the windmill, it's painfully starting to turn. And we see that little cutie pie Akuru, one of the, he's right there with Booyang, second best character, just pulling open the, the gate of time. He's working his little arms and boom, just opens up the gate. Uh, he gets picked up by Toa. They thank him. And this is when I just start tearing up because this, I, this little cutie pie has been, he's just been amazing. And you see him look at his hands and then look back at them and he, you know, the tear runs down his cheek because he has no mouth. He, he smiles with his eyes and he smiles and he starts to fade away. He dies right there on the spot. And I'm just like, what the hell? And he sacrificed all of his life for just to be able to get them back, back. To the feudal era. So it's time to say goodbyes. May is saying she's not going to cry. She's visibly sobbing. And has to hug on to her mother. Who has Brock eyes. I didn't realize it until like two episodes ago. But she has the you know the Brock eyes. The eyes that are closed yet open. I really would like to know what that symbolizes. Anywho. Um, where am I at here? Anywho, you know, uh, Grandmama Higurashi gives Moraha that big old backpack that we all come to know and love that's associated with the Higurashi women. And um, Sota reaches out his hand to uh, Toa and says, you know, this 10 years having you with us has been amazing. I've always felt that you are my daughter and I will always think of you as my daughter. And him reaching his hand out is the same thing when he reached out his hand to her when she was younger. We get that because she reaches out and tells him, she says, thank you, and I'm sorry. Because that's what she's, she's essentially saying goodbye. They, we do not think, or we do not think or believe that they're going to be able to come back from this. And even if they were, even if they survived the ordeal they're going through, how are they going to come back to the, the present era? Even though the ending song pretty much lets us know that they're going to come back to the present era and all where super cool kimonos that matches their personalities regardless of this she tears up he tears up i tear up because this is actually a touching moment this is actually we i'm happy that i've gotten back-to-back -back episodes of good toa moments like the toa moment where she you know uses uh the azure twin kyokun thing with the stardust azure wave that was a cool moment this touching moment here with her adoptive father who's like, you're, you're going to always be my daughter to me. I don't give a damn. And she still carries around the name Toy Higurashi. So, I like it. It, it, was, it was a really good moment. A plus moment. So, time for everybody to jump through. They all jump through. <sighs> Meanwhile, they get back. And they see, they get back. And the world's gone to hell. There's demons everywhere. And um, Toa was wondering, what the heck did Mr. Kieran Osamu, what is he trying to do? Because they look up and they see the Grim Comet looks like it just literally stuck in the sky, you know, with the shattered, broken dimensions, right? And he drops Rion off. And Riku catches up and he, and Riku, man. So it's Buyon, Akuru, Moraha, and then Riku as decent characters. And Riku, thank you. I feel so bad because I didn't like the guy in the first season. Because he comes up and is like, instantly knows who it is. You're the right hand. You're his right hand. Yeah, I know. I threw you in the well. Heard that you grew up. What's going on? Nice hair. You're you're the right hand. Okay. What are you trying to do with Rion? And he's like, yeah, I'm going to make her dreams come true. You know, her dream to make this world flourish and all this other stuff. And he's like, you know, he's like, that's not her dream. And Rion... She has the darkened face to, you know, to show the emotion. That's how they do in this anime and other animes. And she's like, I don't need you anymore. 
She flat out tells him she doesn't need him anymore. Yeah, wait, here we, here we go. <sighs> Dang. I'm trying to see if I actually wrote that in there. Oh, yeah, she just said she doesn't need him anymore. And, you know, he's, you know, Kieran, Mr. Kieran saying he's going to make her real wish come true. Riku keeps trying to tell her, you really shouldn't trust this guy. Literally, if he smells like your dad, you want to kill your dad and didn't like your dad, even though you kind of chickened out on kill killing your dad two episodes ago. Why are you working with this guy now? Because he smelled like the old dad? Okay. This family has got to go. Second time. Anyway, no, this family has got to go. Just flat out. <sighs> so, a world where people can live in peace and, you know... So dumb. It feels like this show was this show should be titled Yashahime Princesses Get Tricked. So he has her just reach just point the fruit up at the tree. All this green energy just swirling out goes to this giant comet, goes to the comet, and the chrysalis that had already come out opens up, and of course it's a giant butterfly. We even the intro showed that the girls are gonna be slashing at a giant butterfly. I mean I don't know what it is with the showrunner, the writer. I don't know if Rumiko, uh, Rumiko Chan herself is actually writing this show. Why do you hate butterflies? Dream butterflies that still, you know, stole your dream, make you not sleep, and but they can also heal someone. They're stealing, and this is I, I don't, and they're also giving a grave body energy. I don't. I'm gonna be real. I really don't know why they hate butterflies in this show. I know there's like some mythologies that believe that butterflies can you know take souls and usher them to the next world there's there's such a thing like that the shimigami butterflies but I, I don't get the feeling from this it just seems like we don't like butterflies they're evil things and this thing is called the grim butterfly that's what mr kieran says and just it looks like gigantamax butterfree actually if Gi if beautifly had a gigantamax form that's what this is and it's obviously in CGI. You can see the weight of when it flaps his wings. It's it's a CGI butterfly. Doesn't look bad, though. And Riku's like, so this is the true identity of the Grim Comet. I'm like, yeah, this is what I call it. I call Guys, You, if you've watched the video, you know my videos. You know I called this. When, as soon as I saw the thing, I'm like, that looks like a chrysalis. It looks like the same thing that went on Ren's neck. Gotcha. I know what this is. So, Asamu says she can say goodbye to her new body. Her old body that's made of dirt and her dreams can come true because these red strings come out and grab both her and Mr. Kieran and pull them up. And I'm just like, what is going on here? So they're linking to the Grim Butterfly. And because he's linked to the Grim Butterfly, now if Karen Maru dies, he doesn't have to worry about dying. He's telling Riku, why don't you come and join us in eternal life, bro? And Riku's like, I don't want that. And that's not her dream. He just throws his blade at him. Throws the cutlass, dude catches it, and it's like, cool, you know, demons who are unnecessary to the plan in this world can just be destroyed. Just throws the blade back at him, making enough force to shatter the little mountaintop that Riku was standing on. And he just, you know, flick the earring and teleports away. They both are pulled into the, the Grim Butterfly, but not before the large racket that was caused woke up Kiramaru, who busts open the doors and go. Osama Kieran, what's going on here? He looks up and he's like, Rion. He sees them both go in. And before Mr. Kieran goes in, he just does this evil smirk like, me. <sighs> like, Rion makes these people evil. I'm sorry. The moment, and here's, here's, where, here's where I'm going with this. The moment Mr. Kieran heard Rion died from the other girls, he kind of changed. He's like, mm, okay, I'm a, I got another plan. Never said he was going to destroy the Grand Comet. Always said he was going to stop it. So I don't know if that was always his goal. To eventually try to take it back and destroy everything. Even though he didn't know that he was an anomaly upon the world that was destroying it. <laughs> but this, this dude just... The moment you hear about Rion getting killed. It's like any part of Kiramaru. Except for the horn. It just seems like R Riku is awkward and weird. Probably because he was always told he was useless. But he was always awkward and weird, but he never said, well, you know what? I got to take that back. He worked with Zero, who basically was trying to kill everybody because she was a jealous. 
a jealous, scornful woman. I was going to use a different word, but I choose not to. It is just unbelievable that whether you're his right hand, his his left leg, his right pinky toe, the skin off of his butt, you're still going to just be this weird, evil thing that doesn't care about anybody except for your own perverse wants. I fully think that Rion, everyone keeps talking about who her mother is. Bro, I'm pretty sure Rion is probably one of his ears or something that got sliced off and was born. He's like, you know, I want a daughter. ka Oh, oh, she's so cute. He, She has to be some part of him and not actually birth. <sighs> boy, oh boy. I even wrote maybe people should just go back in time and stop her from being born. Then maybe none of this stuff would happen. So, back on the ground, the girls have met, uh, wait a minute, no, no, that didn't happen, nope, nope, sorry, sorry, extra notes, um, so Kiramaru, after seeing Rion and Osama Kiran go inside the, I'm gonna say dream butterfly, grim butterfly, uh, he slices the thing open and crawls inside of it, just full on determination crawls inside, and it's just like, okay, I feel you, bro. So, meanwhile, Sasuna, thank you for being smart. Five, amazing character number five goes, that kind of looks like a dream butterfly. And while Morha's like, it's way too big to be that for sure, Inuyasha shows up, of course, with Kagome and Shippo. Then we got Jaken, Takashio, Hisui, and, of course, Kohaku. On top of Kirara, of course, they all show up, and they tell him what's going on, right? They tell they tell the family what's what it is, what's going on. And even Inuyasha's like, all right, Shippo, it's not for us to go up there. They're trying to kill all demons. And we see, de and they even, the Kagome and Inuyasha even say, yeah, all the demons are getting absorbed by this big butterfly with its spores and everything. Just demons are dying. Even demons that are like, I ain't going to die and try to attack it. They die before they can even get up there. So these, they're, there's multicolored pods and everything on the inside of it. Rion is in this, another spear. You started in the spear, you're back in another spear, hooked up to the to the giant butterfly, eyes all red and glowing. Kiramaru shows up, you know, talking about open your eyes, Rion, and Mr. Kieran saying, you need to open your eyes, right? Man, I still can't even believe it. I still can't even believe that this dude got, he used the MacGuffin that was supposed to be used to beat Kiramaru. Just... And I forgot to say that Riku actually crashed into Toa, who she's like, oh man, you're stabbed. He's like, no, let me tell you what's going on up here, though. Just And she can't even believe that Mr. She's like, Mr. Kieran, really? And I'm like, this is a teacher who you met maybe once before you went to the past, uh, went back to the past, and you barely know the guy. Also, he's the right hand of the guy who everyone has been trying to kill and has been saying is evil and whatnot. The whole entire family's crazy. What makes you think that he is not capable of this? Exactly. So meanwhile, Kiramaru was just wondering what's the meaning of all this. Well, Sam was saying you need to bow down to your Lord Master. He's like, I, what, you don't talk to me that like that. They have a clash. Of course, he's overconfident because Mister Kieran just looks like he's about to win. This personality flip is is part of being Kiramaru. It has to be just to flip on a dime, and be a stupid psychopath, and goes, yeah, I'm not gonna lose to some knockoff right hand. I'm pretty sure he just grew another one. Regardless of such, their fight, they, they clash. He wins on the clash, but he says, yeah, I'm trying to make Rion's dream come true. He tells him that he needs to open up his eyes as opposed to Rion open her eyes, even though it looks like she's in a trance and just stuck and being used as a battery at the center of the giant grim butterfly. He tells her, if you will listen to, he tells Kiyomaru, if he will listen to the, the great dog demon, Rion wouldn't have died. And, you know, he says, painful. We're going to be dragged into battle after battle. And Kiramaru was like, is this, tr is this true, Rion? Dude, it's not like she's going to answer you right now, you dummy. <sighs> and Osamu tells him to help him make Rion's dream come true. Right? Go back, sorry. Uh, you know, he's saying that you only cared about your own desires and never what your daughter wanted. And he walks with the sword pointed at him. And he's still wondering, is this true? Which is... It's on brand. We, we've all known for a while 
that Kiramaru is pretty much a selfless, selfless, overconfident blowhard who came from the West, a demon from the West. I'm guessing that since he came from the West, he brought all the demons with him, and that's why the West doesn't have any of these issues. I couldn't tell you guys. But this isn't, this isn't the end. As he walks with his, with that, with that super special Amamushi sword pointed to him, and you know, he tells him that he's the worst kind of father, which is very much true. And he's, Kiramaru still asks Rion, Rion, is this true? She can't talk to you. And Mr. Kieran tells him, you know, the great dog demon's clan is going to come and try to destroy Ren's dream. And I wrote my, my notes, what is this? What is this plot? Like, I'm able to follow this episode, but we have gone full turbo on Switch it up. What was supposed to happen? Who's supposed to be the final villain? Who's not the final villain? Which, at its core, is still Kiramaru who's the final villain bad guy. But what the hell? Like, everything is just swapped super fast. So he's like, he's taunting Kiramaru saying, you want to be the strongest, right? Then go be Shishomaru. That's Ren's, that's Rion's desire. And that's your desire. And... Even though she's not speaking, mind you. And Kiramaru goes, is this true, Rion? Like, again, dude, she's not able to speak to you. Ruhu, after Ruhu tells everyone the deets, again, Toa, cannot believe it. I told you earlier, and I still, again, he's literally the body part of the guy who you've been trying to kill this entire series. Okay. So, everybody's getting ready. Um, I, I jumped the gun by telling you the other people who joined up, but um, Kohaku does give Toa the actual uh, Kikumonji sword because the Shogun said, yeah, use this to end this degenerate age. Um, and so, whole family, everybody's just going to go fly off. They fly off on Takachiyo and Shippo and all the other good stuff. Kohaku asked Jaken, so what are you going to do, jaken -san? And he's like, oh, I'm going to wait for Lord Shomaru. That, that's what I do. Cool. All right, we're gonna go off and go protect more people, but these these demons are still getting absorbed. So now the point is to stop all demons from being destroyed, because now all demons are evil. Obviously, we saw that in Yasha. But at the same time, I don't understand this family's motivations. This family has got to go. So after Jockin says that he's by the tree of ages, Shishomaru stirs, wakes up, Ren's like Shishomaru Sama. He's like Ren. Let's go. He pulls out the blade. They walk through the tree. And they're watching demons die. He's not moving. He's standing right there. He even walks past Jockin, which is very funny. Because Jockin's just like, I guess he thought he was going to get a hug. You weren't going to get a hug, bro. <sighs> and as everyone's flying, Toa's asking Rion to wait for them. Of course, it's the Yashihime with Riku. They're on top of Takachiyo. And of course, mom and dad of Moraha, Kagome, and Yasha there. With Shippo, so they're they're still flying behind them, but yeah, that's our that's our quad right there. And Shishomaru was waiting on Kiramaru, who just falls from this guy with the thud. And Jockin tells Rain, "You got to go hide in the tree." And Shishomaru, he pulls a Kiramaru on Kiramaru. He tells he's like, "Rain, don't move from that spot." And I'm like, "Oh snap!" And he's like, "Don't back away." And she tells him, "Okay, I will not." And that's the ending. We're wrap, we're obviously wrapping up loose ends. We're going to see who's stronger. Kiramaru or Shishomaru, especially with that big evil demon energy Haku absorbing thing. Obviously, Shishomaru is going to go all out and beat him, obviously. Um, <clears throat> who knows? Maybe even Inuyasha might double back around, but like, yeah, I'm going to help my big brother out. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Um, but yeah, next episode is just everybody... Gotta fight Mr. Kieran. And we even see we see more of the OGs. We we got Moroku, we got Sango, we got everybody else coming up. We gotta we gotta beat Mothra. Um I'm inclined to give this episode a four out of five. Only because it hit some really nice emotional beats very early on. And I, I'm willing to I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do it because you know what? We've gathered all the pieces together. Let's just let's get ready to just end this thing. We've we've gotten to the climax. Let's just go and end it. 
I'm inclined to give it a four out of five because even me going, what is this plot? That was entertaining enough for me to enjoy myself because I'm still sitting here going, why does this just feel off? The manga, from the bits that I have read and the stuff that I've seen people show out online, it's so much well, so much better written than this show. I look forward and what is this, 2022? Look forward in 2032 for someone to go, yeah, we're actually going to bring bring out the uh, manga version of it. We're going to call it Yashihime Half Princess Demon, I don't know, 2042 edition. I, I look, f that's going to happen. It's going to eventually happen. We got it with Shaman King. We're getting it with Bleach. We definitely got it with Full Metal Alchemist. We'll probably get it with this show. Sorry for this long one. I just had to fulfill the prophecy that I told you that three times. The Kiramaru clan, those people are just a nuisance. Get them out of here. But let me know what you thought of the episode. Please do not hesitate to leave me a comment down below. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified of more videos just like this. And please, please share the video. I'm trying to get 200 subscribers, y'all. As always, I thank you for taking some time out to spend some time with me. Please be good, be blessed, wash your hands, wear a mask. Be good to yourself, be good to others, either way it goes. Do not be a jerk, and I will definitely see you guys next time. We are not going, we're, we're not going to miss this. We're not missing this.